What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another legendary item guide in Borderlands 3 and this time we're taking a look at the legendary beacon and this is a Malawan pistol and uh, as a Malawan pistol it basically looks like a staple gun <laughs> if you've ever used a staple gun before. I don't know why they have to look so silly. I would love it if they would actually just remove this uh, like front shiny piece here and just make it look like an actual pistol but whatever it's fine. It's very distinct and you know what it is when you see it on the ground. Anyhow, the damage on this one is very high at 16,412, accuracy 82%, handling 76%, reload time 1.6 seconds, fire rate is 9.46 shots per second, mag size of 20. The red text says, this little light of mine, I'm not gonna sing the song. If you guys don't know that song by now, look up this little light of mine on YouTube and have some fun. Uh, this one also features 15% fire rate, 36% weapon charge speed, 60% splash damage radius, and it is anointed to give me 300% increased weapon damage against enemies above 90% health, which used to be a really good uh, anointment, but, you know, with recent uh, change to how that anointment works, it's not the best option anymore, especially not on a pistol. Much better on a, um, a sniper or a rocket launcher, in my opinion. So this is what the beacon does when you reload it. Whatever element you have equipped at the time, so as you can see, we've got corrosive and we have radiation. So if I shoot it and then reload it now, I get a radiation uh, nova. If I switch to corrosive and then reload, oops, and then reload it, then I get a corrosive nova. The nova itself is not really the um, the feature that I want to focus on here, though. The feature I want to focus on is the base damage of this gun. This gun, much like the hell shock, I know a lot of you guys know how good the hell shock is. Uh, the uh, beacon, much like the Hellshock, is extremely powerful. Uh, this is a situation where you normally wouldn't use the beacon versus flying enemies. Uh, but yeah, this gun is extremely strong. And let's take it over here. We're going to use Corrosive versus Flesh for the Minasar. And just to kind of show you that this gun just doesn't really care what the enemy's status is. Look at that. It just melts him down real quick. So real easy to farm weapon as well. This uh, gun, like a lot of the other ones in this DLC are really quick and easy to farm. This is an extremely powerful pistol. If you're in the market for a good pistol, this thing is exceptional. Now, uh, one thing that you should note is that even though this is a uh, elemental Malawan weapon, it does only consume one ammo per shot, as you can see there. So not too bad. All right, so to get this gun, what you want to do is you want to go to the Blood Sun Canyon map. And instead of going all the way to the middlemost point, which I know would make sense because this is the guy you want to farm. He's just right here. But if you go to this one and then you take the elevator up, that elevator is slow as hell. So you're actually going to start right at the beginning of the Blood Sun Canyon map and you're actually going to run across. And it is going to be faster in the grand scheme of things, especially if you're running like Amara or Zane where you have some good speed boosts. If you're on uh, Flak or Moe's, I'm still going to go ahead and say that this way is probably going to be quicker overall, but I'll let you be the judge of that. You could equip a Snowdrift artifact and make yourself go a little bit faster if you want to do that. Could help out considerably with this, but yeah. Ultimately, you're just going to want to follow the path all the way across to the middle point before you would get to the elevator, and you're going to go right here on the map. So I will see you guys when we get over there. When you get to this point of the map right here, you're going to have a save station available to you right here. From there, you just need to go into this little room over here, and that's where you're going to find Jarek Logan. Now, Jarek Logan has a much higher chance to drop the beacon than anybody else in this DLC. Let's see if we can get it on the first run, as a matter of fact. Wouldn't that be great? That would be so great. <laughs> We've had that happen for a few of these videos now. Uh, it doesn't happen as often as I would like, but the drop rates on all of these enemies are exceptionally high. I don't know if you guys have noticed that or not. Uh, nothing on the first run, so we'll save and quit and try again. There are a lot of enemies in his arena, so be prepared for that. All right, run number two. Let's see if we have any luck here. Run number two, and we got it. Nice. Second run, we got a manipulating beacon. Even higher damage than the last one that I had. This one has incendiary damage on it. So all these guys are going to be super weak to that. Um, and then, of course, somebody jumps into my face to ruin the moment for me. <laughs> But as you can see, this gun is extremely powerful, and it doesn't care if something has an armor bar, doesn't care if something has a shield bar. Uh, it doesn't seem to care what element you're having to deal with. It just does work. It's a very, very good pistol. I uh, highly recommend this thing. Uh, this is one of the best all-around weapons in this DLC. So that's my guide to the beacon. Quick and easy farm. 
Uh, like I said, we got it on the second try. It wasn't hard at all to get it. This gun can spawn in all the elements. So make sure you get one in all of them so that you are ready to wreck some face no matter what comes your way. Hope you guys enjoyed this guide to the beacon. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe, tap the bell icon if you'd like to be notified anytime I post a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.